Y'all, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Chad Arms, aka Chaddy Bobby Olimbori. Once again, I'm, I have witnesses here today. It is so hard to come in after that. But I, I fumbled am, that one. Shout out to the move energy drink. Boom, he's got it. My name is Tony, aka Friday the 14th. And next to me, on my, well, I don't it's know what left. direction. Your left. My left. We have on camera. Making my debut, Hot Mike Chance HMC in the building. In the yes. building. On camera, baby. And to my right, we've got one of the get, the gentlemen that's responsible for me wanting to be a rapper. And uh, I take not no only, credit for that. Well, I give you credit for that. <laughs> I appreciate it. He's been my buddy for 20 years, and his wrestling knowledge is up very there. high. Yes. Yeah. So give I, it up, give I, it up I, to I, my boy, I, BJ I, the DJ. I, Boom. I, 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 Boom. I, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say this, though. This is our first official guest on an episode. It is, man. Oh, yeah. uh, so, is. big Glad props. Thank you for here. joining us, with, uh, joining in with us today. Thanks yeah. for having me. What was you going to say, Bubba? Sorry. That was it. That was it. I just wanted to do my... <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just wanted to get that off. <laughs> so, so BJ's been a fan of the podcast uh, for since we started doing it. And it, we've always... Me, him, and our buddy Brandon E., who he'll be on some episodes, too, when we do wrestling stuff. Shout mm-hmm. out, E. Shout out, E. We, we've always watched wrestling, joked about it, our whole friendship, bro. Oh, yeah. So, like, when he started seeing our wrestling episodes and the movie episodes and was talking about it, they had no clue how much knowledge you have on wrestling. Yeah. So way, like, way too much. I was like, man, let me, let me, <laughs> let me bring in one of the ringers here. <laughs> well, that's uh, I think it was uh, one of the last wrestling episodes we did and everything, and he was just dropping so much. I was yeah. like, who is this, Chad? And you're like, it's BJ. I was <laughs> like, my dog, man, yeah. uh, we need to get him on an episode. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're dropping this much knowledge on us right now, we need that in the studio with I'm us. So, I'm glad to be here. Like, This has been one of my favorite podcasts to watch for – I mean, easily since it started, yeah. um, just from the movie side, before you guys even started doing the wrestling part of it, mm-hmm. uh, just watching, I had to go back and watch several movies you guys had mentioned, movies mm-hmm. I'd forgotten about, movies I may have missed something that you brought up, uh, but I've become a really big fan of this podcast, so I'm glad to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's sure, what's man. been fun for me, too. I've gone back and watched some stuff yeah. that I haven't watched in forever from people in the comment section bringing stuff up. Definitely. And so, What do you think about it, Chance? Man, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> He's on camera. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I'm what glad to do we my got. Hands. I'm glad we got our first guest. Yeah, and it couldn't be anyone better. This dude well, has all the knowledge. All the all knowledge. the knowledge. So, so we've got. We're we're going to record a few episodes tonight. But this one that we're talking about today. This is episode, what is this, 19? 19, no yes, way. man. We're yeah, because last week our game. episode was old enough to go to war. Yeah. Now it's, we're, <laughs> we're not there yet. We're creeping, we're creeping up on that uh, drinking age. Can't legally drink yet. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> we're creeping up on it. Shout out creeping to Trouble, by the way. <laughs> Shout out to Trouble Spirits. Shout <laughs> out to Nixon Pro Media. Shout out to Revolution One Media. Yes, sir. Star. This guy over here. <laughs> and look, so th- this episode, we're going to talk about WCW's greatest moments, like our favorite moments in WCW. Yes. Um. I got to say, me personally, I watched way more WWF growing mm-hmm. up. Since I've gotten older and the network's been a thing, I've been able to go back and watch a ton of WCW stuff. Right. I was just always WWF unless I was at my papa's and we would watch Steam. Yeah. And Flair. Yeah. The but Goats. What about you? Like, I was a huge WCW fan. I liked the Southern feel. Like, I'm a, I grew up a huge Memphis wrestling fan, w, uh, USWA. Uh, so, WCW kind of reminded me of a mm-hmm. bigger version of that. Uh, mm-hmm. So much to the point where you would see a lot of those Memphis guys like Tommy Rich and Ricky Morton and all those guys show up uh, yes. on NWA and WCW. So I've always been a WCW fan, especially in the 90s when it was the thing to watch because mm-hmm. at that time, WWF had some of the worst oh, yeah. worst right. ideas, worst characters, yeah. worst everything. So yeah, WCW to me has always been the, the, the be-all, end-all of wrestling. And it's more the wrestling yes. aspect yeah. to it more than the show. It was more about the wrestling Definitely. aspect Definitely. of it. Which, and, I was, and I was always a huge Sting fan and oh, Flair man, fan. So One yeah. of the best. Yeah. Uh, me growing up, I was always a WCW and WWE fan, but I was I leaned more towards the WCW as a kid. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just because, yeah. like I said, the wrestling was top-notch. And it's just – I don't know, it just, there was always it, pandemonium in WCW matches. There yeah. was always something extra going on. Yeah. And it especially was never just a regular match. It was always like the the crowd was in a frenzy and there's somebody doing a run in, the dusty finishes. That, that yeah. old school yeah. Southern that's style. It. That's exactly yeah. what exactly. it was. Like like at the uh, fairgrounds. Yes, that's yeah. ex- you're exactly right. Shout out to the fairgrounds. Shout out to the fairgrounds. If you've yeah. never been to a Nashville fairgrounds show, you don't you've know never what you're missing. That's where my dad first saw Mark Callis out there. Undertaker. He first saw 
him out there at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Lawler. The Rock came through well, there. Shout out to Cole. The Undertaker and The Rock. We, we know y'all are tuning in. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Funny, Thank you. Funny story about WCW. So I grew up a big WCW fan. I had a friend named Kyle Smothers, mm-hmm. who's Tracy Smothers' son. And uh, I was friends with him through his nephew, Tracy's nephew. Wow. And so we were sitting at Kyle's house, and we were hanging out. And Tracy happened to come home. This was right when they won the U.S. tag titles. And we're running around the house, the house with the belts, and we're having a good time. And Tracy goes, I don't really know why you like this stuff. You know it's fake, right? And that was when my childhood was ruined. He's the first oh. person to tell me that And it was the wrestler was that told oh you. Oh, my yes. God. Told me wrestling was fake. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Get out of here. Tracy Smothers is like yeah. touted as one of the most – like wrestling yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he was like you know it's fake right and i just couldn't grasp my little young 10 or 12 year i think i was 12 at the time my little 12 year old mind about the fact wrestling was fake exactly oh just it's like like santa (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, i found out i I don't remember the exact moment i found out because growing up like i told everybody yes yeah, y'all know how much I oh yeah the Hulk Hogan getting yeah. sat on my earthquake yeah. and I wrote him a postcard. <laughs> like I thought that shit was real, and yes. then along the time, so many people like my friends at school was like, you know, that's fake. It's not real. I'm like, no, it's not. It's real. It's yeah. real. Oh yeah, I yeah, told my son now. My son's eight. And I've told him that it's it's a work, and he so we when we play wrestle. He really – he'll lay into me. He'll, like, really knock yeah. my teeth out. He'll potato you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he doesn't – but he doesn't understand, like, there's a way to do it. Right. Yeah. Of course. He will yeah. eventually. But he understands now that, okay, it's physical, but it's not actually what it what it looks like. Exactly. So, yeah. what, what about you growing up, Chance? Was you leaning – did you lean more towards WCW or WWE? I, I like the Southern style of yep. WCW, but I like the presentation of WWE, WWE. more. Definitely. And and WWE was a lot easier for me to watch as far as just access to it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, WCW was, was always course, great, too. As a kid, too, the land of the giants that yeah. WWE was at that time, of yep. course, that drew you in. Right. But especially when – Hogan made that change over to WCW. It was a big mm-hmm. factor to me. Definitely. Especially that super leaned up Hogan after so, leaving WWE. After post, he got off the post juice. Post I don't know what happened there. <laughs> so you were a Hogan fan? Huge Hogan was, fan? Yeah, Hogan, oh, Hogan was a superhero to oh, me. Gotcha. Uh, he was everything. Yeah. Mine too. And I was more of the Flair fan. And it's crazy because now, like, my factuation with, like, Rolex watches and stuff like that is all from – I blame my rapper – the rapper in me for being that way, but it was really flair. The, yeah. ro- the, the whole promo, the Rolex wearing the, the, the nice suits mm-hmm. and stuff like that was all flair. And that was he was way ahead flair. of his time. Definitely. He was he truly influenced all that stuff. Definitely. Yeah. He, yeah. The, yeah. The, the touch that he's Ric Flair's had over many generations yeah. mm-hmm. is, is wild. Definitely. And yeah. it's crazy to me that that motherfucker still kicking. I know. <laughs> I mean, he's, you know and, and out of all the wrestlers. Yeah. Well, in the last couple of weeks too, Another wrestler passed away. Draws, Draws passed yeah. away. I saw that. Um, yeah, he was like fifty three, fifty four. Of course, he had been paralyzed for twenty five years. Yeah, it's but, been a while. But like going back to what you said about the differences, what I noticed, even going back and watching now, the presentation, like Chance said in WWF, they had, and I don't even want to say they had more money because Turner had more money than, yeah. than Vince. But yeah, it, the the first thing that I can tell you that I noticed the most is the music. Mm-hmm. Yep. How generic the music yeah. sounded in WCW. Oh yeah, as, yeah. A, as opposed to them having Jim, uh, Jim Johnson, Jim yeah. Johnson, Johnson and, yeah. yeah, and WWF having him at their disposal. To the music, it it sounded like that's the first thing I heard because, like, especially like stars that had a WWF career and moved to WCW, right. yeah. the difference in their music. Dude. Yeah. yeah, like uh, Real American is one, like yeah. one of the iconic most, is iconic. Yeah. But can you name Sting's intro? No, that's what I'm saying. Like you can name, like I'm, I know it in my head. You know it in I your head, it in but head. it doesn't have that. It's like it's not real America. Yeah, you know, and stuff. And like then that. the, the only it. one that I know that I can just tell you is the Steiner, the Steiner brother, because it's yeah. Steiner line or something yeah, like yeah. that. That's the only one I can think of. And, and flares, of course, and, and the like NWO in in the NWO. NWO song, right. but, like, but like WWF, I could tell you the Bushwhackers things. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. tell you like, the Bushwhackers. I could tell you, know you all the like all every one of theirs became like its own iconic type of. Be like Austin's, The Rocks. Yeah, it's uh, his own character. Even to this day, like AJ Styles and guys like that, like they've got really good music. Yeah. Once that opening chord hits, it's like yep. it's you know, him. you, you know. know who it yep. is coming out to the ring. And uh, like fun fact, the um, the fire, the, the fabulous Freebirds were the first ones to actually do their own intro music. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like way before Sean and all them did it, it was actually they were one of the first ones. So. Yep. They were the had first. a little music video to go with it and everything. Yeah, because yeah. uh, what's uh, God, I'm going blank. Uh, 
Michael Hayes. Michael Hayes. He sang. He the, sang it. Yeah. And everything. Yeah. Golly, it's crazy. He, he just loves. He just wants to fucking sing. Dude. Yeah. He <laughs> he was a long lost member of Leonard Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> he could have been in Leonard. They Skinner. could have been. Yeah. They definitely could have been. <laughs> They were the wrestling version of Leonard Skinner. Yeah. That's what they were. Absolutely. <laughs> no. But they, they drew a crowd. Definitely. Them and the Rock and Roll Express's feud. I mean, it, back then, getting heat was so much different yeah. than it is now. Definitely. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want heat instantly beat up on Ricky and Robert. Yeah. Beat them up. Or just Dusty. Beat them up. Yeah. Or Dusty. Dusty. Beat them up. I mean, uh, I mean, we could just roll right into it with the uh, with this episode going into the NWA area, uh, era of mm. – yeah, that's oh. one thing I, I put on here. Like, I identified WCW in four different categories, the first being the NWA era because that was when I first fell in love with yeah. it. NWA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That NWA title to me is iconic. That's it's, one of the best belts ever. It is uh, the And then belt. the big gold belt was the most – it's the that's, perfect championship belt, right? Yeah, that one. And sure. then I had pre-NWO era, which was the mid-'90s era. Right, where they're getting ready to launch Nitro and all that stuff. Up to like 95. Yeah. 90, yeah. yeah 96, and then the NWO yeah. era, which went on forever. And then post NWO era, this which the was the Russo era. The Russo era, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Which yeah. absolutely. Definitely. And you were talking me. about getting heat. Like like you said, beating up on Dusty. Um, and if we're talking about huge, iconic WCW moments, like you've got one that you pinpointed about the Four Horsemen beating up on Dusty. Yeah, when uh, when Dusty was coming out to help Flair. Yes. Uh, and everything, and yeah. then they turned on him in the Omni. Oh, when they broke his leg? Yeah. In yeah. Flair, was notor- uh, Flair was notorious yeah. for that, turning on people. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, I need they you, I need the, you. And yeah, then, they locked the cage up, yep. and a, little, or a riot broke out. Was in that the, when the Four Horsemen actually formed? Is that when that happened? Uh, it's it could have been. I'm not quite sure. I think it's sure close that. to that. It's, I think it that's should be when right actually, there around there. But yeah, it, like fans were wanting to kill the yeah. Horsemen for doing that to Dusty. Because if I remember mm-hmm. on the DVD, they made a comment about they beat up Dusty, and then next thing you know, Arn Anderson cuts the the famous promo about you know you have to go all the way back to the biblical times with the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then everyone came out throwing up the fours, and yes. I think that was after they beat up Dusty that time. So it could be very. Yeah. Could, that sounds right timeline wise. Because it, well, it was like a year or so later that they broke his uh, arm out in the parking lot. Correct? Right in the parking yeah. lot, baby. They, they broke his arm. <laughs> but I mean, that's just he was trying to go to the pay window. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just you don't get that kind of heat no, nowadays. Not at all. Yeah, where it fans was, were like yeah. uh, the heels going back to the locker room were afraid for their lives. And you know what? Yeah, like right. I was never, and don't kill me for this, I was never a huge Dusty fan. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember anything iconic about his NWA title runs. I remember the flair for the gold segments. Mm-hmm. Like I don't remember anything iconic. I just always remember Dusty having his hand in booking yeah. and producing and things like that. Like His far promos. As, mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. the promos, promos is what, yeah. yeah. But uh, there was nothing. Hot times. Hot <laughs> <laughs> There was nothing ever really iconic to me about Dusty. Not to say he wasn't great, because obviously he's one of the best. Uh, But nothing really – I don't remember anything that stood out to me about Dusty. I mean, mainly the stuff with him and Flair. Yeah. Uh, You know, of course, we know when he was doing stuff with with Magnum and, um, like, the Road Warriors and stuff like that. Like, so – but – well, it, that and a little, the Dusty stuff kind of predates us a little bit, too. I didn't Mm -hmm. learn more about the Dusty stuff till later on and everything. Sure. Um. With, and then I got more of a pre, and then like you said, once he got into the booking, and yeah. especially in the in it when he, him and Triple H took over NXT, NXT yeah, that definitely. was a game changer, a definitely. And all definitely. those guys that are still wrestling here and there still uh, praise Dusty for definitely. the work that they did definitely. with him, especially in the promo department. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, what better person to learn how to cut a promo from but Dusty yeah, Rhodes? Dusty like Rose. that's you gotta have him. So for me, like if I'm talking about huge WCW moments mm-hmm. or most important, uh, you know, Flair beating Harley race and establishing himself as WCW's guy. Like to me, WWE had Hogan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Flair was their Hogan. And to me, but I always felt like he was larger than Hogan, but Hogan was more recognizable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he that was by far the, the best, first, better wrestler. Right. Mm-hmm. For, for the NWA to really establish themselves as an entity with WCW, finding that guy. And to me, it was Flair, no matter who Flair wrestled, steamboat, sting, whoever, Flair was the Boom guy. Stick. He'll take yeah. you an yeah. hour and make you think he's getting beat, and then they somehow, some way, 
he comes out with that title every single time. Well, that's like know. when Luger, uh, when he put over Luger and yep. everything. Luger was uh, was green as yeah. all can be, yeah. and he Luger never could wrestle. Yeah, no. never. and huh. he put on <laughs> a well, Flair put on a yeah. hell of a match yes. to make Luger look like a superstar. Oh yeah, Flair. Sure. I mean, yeah, Luger looked amazing. Like the the over the head presses and the clotheslines. Like Flair sold all of that yeah. stuff. Yeah, so. and that's one thing you don't get as much. I probably uh, is selling nowadays. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now everything's a high spot yep. nowadays yep. and there's like we talked about that, a couple episodes that Kenny Omega yeah that bothers me more than me. the high spot selling the yeah. set, like just constantly one hot spot a high spot yeah. I get tired of that's super how, kicks that's new res- yeah, yep. that too and then like the hit, slapping your side yep. while you're kicking them everybody's got a but super kick yeah. I went back and watched a lot of those early cruiserweight uh, matches and uh-huh. they're similar yeah. but uh, back then yeah. I just didn't notice it and there's spots that we thought back then with the cruiserweights the spots we thought were like Awesome. Yep. Are mediocre compared to yeah. today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's like well, like everybody gave Kevin Nash shit about the vanilla midgets. Yeah. Um, calling all like mm-hmm. the no spot, like yeah. all the like no like selling, and everybody got onto him about that. Like everybody, Jericho and all them went on went off on him about it, and I get it while they're feeling the way they feel, but I also get what Kevin Nash is saying. Yeah. yeah, but it's also coming from Kevin Nash, who's a big dude that that does the best he can do. Yep. Yeah, but he can't work like that, but. The, and he wasn't the best at selling either. No, <laughs> but like, but like, and it's funny because, um, you know, with WCW, like, there was a lot of dope ass moments, you know, like, but like what he was saying when when they cre- created the gold, the big gold belt, definitely, yeah. that was a huge thing. I mean, that belt just looked it, that it's, said champion. To mm-hmm. me, there's two iconic belts that that just come to mind when I think about what a championship should look like it's the big gold belt and it's the winged eagle yep. yes those are two of the best belts mm-hmm. ever created that big gold belt man like it just looked so good sitting there um just and it, it just took so up prestigious. so much space so yeah. prestigious it is, yeah yep, it, it took up so much space on their waist and you never saw anybody wear the title around their shoulder either. right everyone wore it, it around the waist mm-hmm. wore everybody it around the waist You're right and mm-hmm. you see that more now where they're throwing the main title over their shoulder yep. and everything now to me if you're a champion you wear the belt around your waist and you come I always around. felt like WCW had the best belts like the US title was awesome looking the TV title yeah. Yeah. like I always the six man title the the tag title the, all those remember, belts looked really remember good remember the old school light heavyweight champion yes. <laughs> yeah yeah oh, wow. all that of was those. before that was a pre cruiserweight pre cruiserweight yeah yeah what a what, you got any WCW moments you like you can remember off the top of your head uh not not around that era but Just in general. Uh, I I think the uh the Jericho Mm-hmm. Whenever he did the the one thousand and four man of a one thousand and four, yeah, oh, yeah. armbar through the, the whole, original list through the whole yeah. that yep. was the original list, and then they cut yeah. to a commercial and come back, and then he was still going. Dude, Jericho yeah. was so yep. underrated in that time, yes. in my opinion, especially like he had that feud that he that feud he tried getting with Goldberg, Goldberg yeah. that Goldberg wanted no part no of, part of, yep. and no part of. Jericho had his own secu- the truck driver as a security guard, yep. and then yeah. they had that skit where he got lost in the back. Trying to do his intro. Wait, like who Goldberg. was the guy? Who was the big guy with was the it? Ralphie? Yeah, yep. Ralphie. He, I think yeah, Ralphie. Yeah, yeah. I think he was Ralph, a truck driver Ralph, for the production Rufus. crew. <laughs> Rufus. <laughs> Ruf, was it Rufus? I, think, I don't know, but we'll yeah. get a picture Ralph, of him. His Rufus. picture will be somewhere. <laughs> but I think he was a legit truck driver on the oh, production that's squad. Great. I love that. But my favorite one was when he was doing his little spinal tap moment, trying to find the ring, and kept getting lost in the backstage yes, area. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Jer- Ralphus. 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 Yeah. Dude, Jericho was so underrated in that time, dude. Oh, he was really trying to. I mean, Jericho is. To and me, he didn't want to. He didn't want to go over on Goldberg either. Yeah. He talks about it numerous. He times. wanted He's to like, get beat. He yeah. he wanted to make money. Right. And he he knew that feud was money. I mean, but I, I get it. Goldberg was a main event player, and to, it was almost like a step back to wrestle someone like Jericho. But he may have also been intimidated by the fact Jericho would have probably, you know, really put him through the ringer. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, yeah. I mean, this is true too. Would you? This may be controversial, not really, but would you compare Goldberg's in ring ability to like Warrior? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. I, it probably as far yeah. as limited, obviously. Definitely. Yeah. Jackhammer, fire, spear. Yeah. Spear, fire. Probably the best spear in wrestling. Yeah. Definitely. But like, and the Jackhammer was. I mean, the moves, man got Kevin. I mean, not Kevin. He got the 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 giant, the giant up yep. in the jack. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can't. I just mean like from a standpoint of a limited not being able to work all that great. We he should have never had a match over ten minutes ever. No, mm-hmm. I don't think he did. That's why they they did a great job of. Hiding the negatives, yep. accentuating the positives, yeah, but definitely, like like everybody got on, you know, when Nash, uh, 
when they beat beat him and you know Nash was like everybody gave a shit about that but like what did y'all want him to do go five thousand and oh right like, what, well the worst some, thing about it is when they beat him is Nash the finger poke of doom happened to win. right after, that was like yeah, an insult right to injury. if he would if they yeah. would have just Kept the belt on Nash for a little bit. And he was like, it clearly showed you that I wasn't doing it for me because right. I lost the belt the next week. Yeah, right. he, no, uh, you know. the finger poke do. Yeah, I mean, it, it dropped. It just pretty much just dropped the title. But that's for, that's okay. another, like, I would say, since we're speaking on that, like, as far as – That would be worse point, moments in – That, that would, would be, be yeah. like, <laughs> one of the best WC moment, WCW moments for me is when Goldberg – um, had that match in the Georgia Dome oh, God, on yeah. Monday Nitro, and they sold it out. They in did so yep. well about it. It was literally set up on that Thursday. They had on Thunder. They said, "Oh, it's Hogan and Goldberg at the Georgia Dome." They sold the place out. Yeah, and the match was probably about seven, eight minutes. It didn't go long at all, yep. and it was high impact from the jump. And Pop. you knew what was going to happen. You <laughs> knew there was no way they could have went a different but way. That was one of the like most iconic oh, yeah. WCW moments. But at the same time, looking back. Eric Bischoff was so obsessed with beating Vince McMahon. Yep. Yeah. He could have made millions of dollars on a pay per view. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They and did they it talk on about nitro. how he blew the he blew the, the wide with like doing it on nitro. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the but thing I get is why that, they were doing it. That's just it's what, just for ratings. That Definitely. That's just what mm-hmm. they were in at the time. Definitely. I mean, and but he could have. But then it opens up the discussion for Hogan to say. I don't really think I want to do the job to Goldberg. That's yeah, true. like yeah. by saying Thursday, hey, we're doing this on Monday. You kind of eliminate him throwing Second that little claw. Yeah, like mm-hmm. let's go ahead and do this. This is where we're going. You know, because uh, Hogan did that a couple even with Jeff Jarrett when yep. uh, Jarrett just dropped in the middle of the ring and dropped the title. To I him. hated that too. Did they yep. know that that? So I know this. We can talk. This is still WCW. Yep. But yeah. That moment. Do you think Hogan knew? Or was that, do you the think con- he knew the, that that because he looked really pissed? But I was like, is that, I don't know if all that's a work or not because I think the screw job is a work. Yeah, I do I, too. I do. Me yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, I do too. Which we can do a whole episode on. The screw yeah, we, yeah, we can do. Yeah, uh, I think this. I've heard two different stories here. I heard I've watched one that Hogan was saying they knew they were doing something along those lines. Yep. Uh, and I've watched one where Jared said. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna go in here and wrestle this man, knowing that he had pulled his card and said, "I'm not doing it." Mm-hmm. So I think the plan was always for Jer- Jarrett to win, and Hogan didn't want to do the job for Jared. They would have found so a way to, Jared, fin- yeah, yeah. Smack him in yeah I yeah. think that was. Yeah. I, that's the last one I saw was Jared saying the the plan was for me to lose regardless. It was either going to be Booker T or it's going to be Hogan. Yep. Um, and I think they did the right thing by having Booker come out and beat Jared later on for yeah. it. I think that was mm-hmm. the right thing to do. Which leads me to one of my favorite moments. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a Florida State fan through and through. Mm-hmm. Ron Simmons winning the world title for the yep. first time. Oh, Huge moment for WCW. He was the first African-American uh, wrestler to win the world title. Yeah. Yeah. And then with Booker T winning, it was almost 20 years later when Booker T won the That's title. That's crazy. Yeah. And, so, and you can debate whether or not Rock is half this, half that, or whatever. But, you know, Rock being WWE champion, you just don't see very many African-American world champions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Big E and Kofi and all those guys winning the WWE title and, and Bobby Lashley, you know, is huge. Uh, but Ron Simmons was the one who really set the stage and, like, set the precedent for that. I mean, he yeah. deserved it, right? Oh, yeah. Such a beast. It's yeah. like crazy so, how long of a career Ron yeah. Simmons had, had too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean – I watched a couple episodes where they came out, him and Butch Reed, they were wearing masks and they were Doom 1, Doom yeah. 2. Yep. Yeah. And it was a shocker when they found out who they were. Like, you couldn't tell? <laughs> yeah. Like, who else do you know Even, that big? All the way to the Acolytes and the APA. Yes. I loved him in the APA Oh, base. yeah, definitely. Dude, him yeah. and Those Bradshaw, backstage – Segments with them playing poker, Great. and you, and then Perfect. extended yeah. with just with getting away with one word. Yeah, damn. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. he he made millions off of one word yeah. on a t shirt. Ron Simmons is great, and yeah. that was a that, that was, was a, a huge moment. Definitely. That was a huge yeah. moment. That was a and going back, I went back and watched that match. Yeah. and everything, and the pop yep. in that match. And, People crying, in and the what crowd. better what better opponent to have than Vader? Like that yeah, was dude. a perfect opponent for him. They're both big guys. He could really throw Vader around. Vader could throw Ron Simmons around. It was believable when what, he won what, the title. What pay per view was that? A pay per view that they did that? On? I think it was a Saturday uh, Saturday um, night uh, WCW Saturday night. I believe. I thought Let's it was see. a. I thought it was a pay per view. What I didn't like was the belt. I didn't like that was that international title. Yeah, I didn't like that. Dude, is is Vader one of the most unappreciated yes. big men ever yes. in wrestling? Definitely the guy. Did a moonsault when nobody else was doing moonsaults. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I, I loved Vader. I, I love, but Vader. I, I don't know if he. I guess he was considered underrated. But you could say the same thing about Bam Bam Bigelow. Oh, definitely. I think yeah. Bam I Bam think Bam Bam Bigelow was more underrated, underrated than, than Vader. Yeah, but Vader, I, I still think 
Dude, he was so terrifying. And if you watch some of those matches with him and Cactus Jack, he yep. was really firing. Dude, him and Cactus Sting, Jack. him and Sting's matches yep. in the early WCW. I think a lot of people liked wrestling Vader because they knew they can have their way with him because he's a bigger guy. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you can even go back before then and watch some of his matches in Japan, like him and Stan Hansen, where he popped his eye yeah. out. Yeah, like that. I mean, them them guys would go at one another. It, well, it was a house show. Was in it Baltimore, Maryland? Okay, I was way off. No okay. way. It wasn't yep. televised. I, I, they may have showed it I think at a later you can point. Watch it. You can they watch probably it recorded it at a house. Yeah. He said that he, is he lame. Captured it uh, See, at a house another, show in Baltimore, Maryland. And now that was of was that Bill Watts' decision to make? I think who ninety two. Um, that sounds like Bill Watts. Kind of yep, that's when he yeah. took over. But I think that was a good call because I mean, oh yeah. At that time, like Flair was in WWE, right? He wasn't there. Flair was in WWE. And see, Bill Watts was doing that, was helping push Ron Simmons, yep. just like he did with uh, Sylvester Ritter. Um, in, in Junkyard Dog. Junkyard yeah. Dog. Yeah. Absolutely. In uh, what was it? Was it um, mi- uh, Midwest. Uh, Mid-South, sorry. Mid-South, South, yeah. 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 Mid-South. But he was Which, doing the same thing. And it, I mean, great. By, uh, great. Junkyard Dog was uh, – he was insanely beast. over, bro. Yeah. I didn't realize till watching that. Me either. Uh, until uh, yeah. Dark Side of the Ring. Dark Side of the Ring, knew, how over he yeah. was. All we knew oh, was knew. WWF. Yeah, this is the so, WWF days. I want to say it was him. He wrestled in Memphis. He lost a loser. You know, he had a loser leave Memphis. He came back wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. And I think that was him. I could be mistaken. Uh, but he was so over everywhere he went. And, he, you know, he lost a match. They make him leave. He comes back wearing a mask. Yeah. Obviously, it's him. But everyone's like, who is the new guy? Yeah, I didn't realize how over he yeah. really was. Oh, he was, yeah, everywhere he went. Yeah, yeah. it was insane. But that was during the time. I think I was – he came back to WCW in the mid-'90s or the early-'90s mm-hmm. when they were really starting to push. Uh, and I think he challenged Flair for the world title there. Um it's like 91, I think it was. He yeah. one of the Clash of the Champions or something. So. I love that year, and it's bad. But yeah. there's something about 92. I've been going through the pay-per-views <laughs> mm-hmm. on yeah. WCW 92. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just so nostalgic. Like, it's bad. Oh, yeah. But, like, that – dude, I was just watching it earlier. I, like, I was showing y'all. Like, I was watching, um, I want to say Beach Bash. It was before Bash of the Beach. It was <laughs> Beach Blast or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They used to name the Clash of the Champions. Like, Fall Brawl became – it was a Clash of the Champions first, then it became a pay-per-view. Okay. And that's what, was what they the, used to do. What was the one thing they did? It was like Battle Bowl Yeah, or Lethal battle Lottery. Bowl. Yep. The, <laughs> Luke, the Battle the Bowl Lottery Lethal Lottery or something? Yeah. It was yeah. like one time they did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they did it. Uh, I think 91, 92. Yeah. Okay. Did, yeah. My favorite was War Games. Yeah. Yeah. War, War Games. War games. That was the best thing Dude, ever. War yep. Games, yep. especially, what was it, 95 when it was Hogan – Macho Luger and Sting on one team against the Dungeon of Doom. Or the, du- yeah. the Dungeon of Doom. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Dude, and, and dude, then two, where they came out in the fatigues and everything. Yep. Dude, and then the the heels won the coin toss every every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude, every some time. of those war games cages were like their heads were like yep. Top, yep. touching the top, and they would the still try to do like off the top rope maneuvers. <laughs> I'm like, why are you doing there's that? The, there's the whole ordeal where uh, Psycho Sid uh, broke dudes. Uh, yes. Yep. <laughs> Nick, who was it, Pillman? Yeah, I think so. Because yeah. oh, he hit man. his head on the. He was trying to power bomb him, and classic Sid just. I mean, just don't didn't give a fuck. Look at his surroundings and just <laughs> fucking dumped him on his skull. Classic psycho. But like that, that time frame to me was like going back and watching it. You know, because WCW Saturday Night or whatever it was. That's what I used to watch with my papa because it would Saturday show. Night, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it would show Sting and Flair and all that. Um, but I would think too, like. Obviously, once the NWO started becoming a thing, you saw the outsiders coming over there. Yep. That was a huge moment yeah. because nobody knew Especially what was going on. Especially when Scott Hall showed up on Nitro that was coming crazy. out of the crowd. That was crazy. Yeah. That was total game changer. It's like, what? Hold, what? That's Razor like, Ramon. What's he doing over right. here? It was 95. This was before America Online, right? I mean, there yeah. was the yeah. internet, but none of us had it. Yeah, right? and you you he just like, jumps in the ring. It's like, wait, wait a second. You were jumping from channel to channel, bro, and that's when WWF was doing – the goon and fucking Duke the Dumpster Drosy and fucking <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. Like, Which will be a future it, episode. For it you was too. terrible. Bastion Booger and fuck, <laughs> I mean, so like seeing that kind of stuff. That was one of the most well, well thought out storylines in WCW history. The yeah. NWO, the Outsiders, yeah. the Invasion. Yeah. Uh, now I know you said it, was, and I've seen on the on the documentaries that Eric Bischoff got that idea. He copied Japan. it from Japan. Yeah. yeah. So, so the Japan did an invasion angle. Uh, with one of the – you had New Japan Pro Wrestling, you had another stable of wrestlers in yeah. Japan, and they invaded one another. And so at that time, Eric Bischoff was – WCW was starting a partnership with uh, New Japan, and they were going yeah. back and forth. Was this, uh, the, uh, 
Sonny Ono. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. and you know, I think they did a pay per view there called uh, "Land of the, Ri- the Rising Sun" or something. I remember uh, there was an early. Yeah, yeah, there was an early WCW. It was game an early that, WCW yeah. video game that had the. the I remember that Japan. WCW versus the World. Yes, that's, that's it. Was. Yes, that's yes, because you had yeah. Jushin Thunder. Nintendo sixty four. Yeah, that's exactly what he always about. wanted to be Jushin Thunder Liger yep. on that one because he. Yep. Uh, one of the best matches ever though was that Jushin Jushin. Whoa! Say it again. <laughs> Jushin Thunder Liger and Rey Mysterio match. Oh, so. And a plus and the Eddie Guerrero, uh, Rey so, Mysterio match. Yeah, New Japan and the, and the the Oriental style wrestling was was what kind of brought in the the cruiserweight. Yeah, I always kind of like I don't know I kind of credited ECW with kind of starting oh, yeah. that wave. Yeah, I think because if you look at they a lot pulled of guys, in Eddie Guerrero before WCW. Exactly, if you look at a lot of those yeah. guys, they came from ECW, then came to WCW to get that big check. Rob Van Dam was there in the beginning mm-hmm. when yeah. they started. Mm-hmm. Um, Brian Pillman was probably to me the originator of the light heavyweight with yep. like Tom Zink and Z Man, dude. Those guys. Oh I, yes, the Z Man, Brad dude. Armstrong, yep. and all those guys that were like the. He's heavy in the '92. Too Pillman Cold Scorpio. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Too Cold Scorpio was another one, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you start seeing them popping up on WCW, and they're usually the opening match on yep. everything. Dean Malenko. Dean Malenko was an opener, and he would. You put, talk about underappreciated. Uh, thank you so Dean much. Dean Malenko. You talk about. I mean, that guy should have been a world champion at some point. Even, he just didn't even have a personality. Now that agent the price right. agent. so the perfect example to Dean Malenko right Kevin Nash said on a shoot interview one day he said he said I love Dean Malenko he said great worker he said but the personality wasn't there he said perfect example they said one of his shirts his merchandise yeah was like the man with the some eyes and they didn't even get his eye color right on the show. No way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like, that just shows like how much they didn't tap in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Dean Malenko. He wasn't trying to like shit on him. He was just being honest about it. Well, coming back to Dean Malenko too. I remember when, uh, it, him and that Jericho feud and they were having the, what was it? The triple a battle Royal or yep. something yeah, like yeah, that. Mm-hmm. And then Dean Malenko comes out, he wins the battle Royal and takes off the mask, the mask. and it's Dean Malenko, yep. and then boom, he wins the cruiserweight title yep. from Jericho. I loved watching that cruiserweight title swap hands so often. I, I loved it. Billy Kidman yeah. was Billy so Kidman, awesome to watch. Yeah. There was a Mysterious. bunch of those Moving guys. dude, the but juice. Think, of, think about this, yeah. though. Like, the guys that were underutilized in WCW would go to WWE or WWF at the time, and they would become champions. Like, you've got Rey Mysterio, Jericho, Eddie Guerrero, Benoit, Benoit nope. is the only person I think yeah. to win both versions of the gold belt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Booker T might have. Yeah, um, Booker, yeah, Booker T did. But I think didn't didn't Benoit leave as champion? Like he yeah. won the title and then left the next, the next day, day or yeah. something. Yeah, and then uh, him him Guerrero was it Perry Saturn and Perry Saturn and uh, uh, who was the fourth one? You had Saturn, you had Malenko, you had Guerrero, Jericho, Jericho. No, Jericho, no, Jericho was separate. Jericho, yeah, he they were the separate. radicals. Yeah, it was They're whoever the, the radicals um, were. Uh, Perry Saturn. Who was Saturn, the fourth one? Ray, Mis- uh, Perry, Perry no, Saturn. Ray Mysterio didn't come in until later, yeah. after WCW Perry closed. Saturn, Benoit. Uh, Dean Malenko. Dean Malenko. Malenko. Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero. Benoit. Okay. Eddie yeah, Guerrero. So, you see what we forgot? We forgot Dean Eddie, Malenko. Yeah, I forgot so, Dean yeah. Malenko. <laughs> and I hate that, too, because he know, was so that's good. I know, but I'm saying that's, but that's, he was that's so what Nash tec- was saying. In that yeah. yeah, he's so yeah. technical, man. And one of the things we were talking about off, off air um, – the man of a thousand holds was his gimmick yeah. and his yeah. feud with Jericho where Jericho was talking about, I'm the man of a thousand and four holds. Yep. Yep. And then he started counting them yeah. and then they went off the air and he comes back after commercial break and he's still counting the holes. Like that's just, that you can't was make that up. No, like, bro, no. like yeah. the whole, the whole war was fire. I'll tell you what, the biggest WCW moment that I could probably say, and I'm sure everybody would say it's one of them. Obviously when Hogan's Hogan turns heel, right? Yeah. Bash at the beach. So when that happened, that happened in '96. Yep, I, we were on a family vacation in Panama City, right? Oh, I gosh. remember seeing the pay per view. I talked my my grandparents into buying the pay per view, sixty dollars pay per view on vacation. On vacation, because <laughs> I was like, <laughs> gotta I watch knew it. Hulk, you know, I knew yeah. it was going to be a big. <laughs> you got to watch it, and we watched it, and we were like, "What should Hulk yeah. Hogan turn mm-hmm. bad guy?" I wonder so what the buy rate was, was on that pay per view. Yeah. And because that had to be one of the biggest buy rates they ever had. Oh, well, we, I never bought a WCW. Because you knew there, there was going to be a third dollar. guy, regardless. You just didn't know who it was going to exactly. be. Exactly. Like, who could it have been other than Hogan? And Hogan never even crossed my mind at my little 15, no, no, 16 year old no, age. No, never. I, I, I was, uh, Hogan well, I, was, uh, like I said, a real life superhero. To right. Me. me too. And when that when we watched the Monday Night Nitro the next night, because when he turned back, I was like, I couldn't believe it. So then I couldn't wait till Monday Night Nitro. Right. Though. Yeah. The next night, we're still in Florida. It's the next night, right? 
and we're sitting there like, I'm like, this can't be real. Hulk yep. Hogan cannot be a bad guy. Yeah. This cannot, because I was 12. At the yep. time. Wearing you know his black I mean? skinny jeans with, and tucked dude, into his cow, black cowboy And I was boots. like, this is, my, me and my pap, because my, my papa and me were the only ones that really, really watched it like that. My brother would watch it casual, yeah. casually, but we were just like, he, 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 I, don't, I don't get this. It's not understand. happening. <laughs> but yeah, that to me. Is it's got to be top three biggest? Oh yeah, definitely. WCW moments. That when when the Outsiders uh, crashed Monday Nitro at, yeah. at MGM yeah. Studios. Yeah, I mean, oh that, man, dude, uh, that Jimmy Hart sold that thing more <laughs> yeah. than anybody. Him rushing out to the ring and telling everybody to get to the back. Because wasn't it Sting and Flair in the ring wrestling? It it wasn't was a, it? It was a tag team a match. Tag team go, match. Yeah, yeah, going on. So you've at, got two of the biggest like feuds. I think Luger was in the ring too. So you've got two of the biggest feuds. Yeah, it was like it was Sting and. Luger, it, yeah, Flair and Arn, I think. Yeah, no, because Arn got hurt in the back. So who they, was, they attacked Arn first, and then they uh, threw Mysterio up that's against what it was. the trailer. Yeah. So you've got two of the biggest like feuds going on in WCW at the time, and then all of a sudden you see them. You, that's when you first saw the WCW camaraderie yeah. against what what is this? What's yeah. going on here? Mm. That was so cool because they had said that like people were calling the cops. They thought it was legit. Yeah, yeah I thought the, it was. Yeah, they said the ambulances that were pulling up were like legit. They didn't even know they were coming. Like it just added to the to the effect of what was happening in the moment. Well, and in all fairness, it looked like they killed Ray. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, they, yeah. When they lawn darted him against that trailer. Dude. Yeah, and then they pulled off with Macho Man hanging on to the sunroof of the limo. All, <laughs> all, every one of them were coked every, up. Dude. Dude, you know, all, all of them were coked up. <laughs> They had to be. There's no, everybody. no <laughs> doubt. This was the mid '90s, so maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. But if, uh, ten years previous, everybody was. But one of the most heartbreaking moments to me, and I, you, uh, BJ, you had this wrote down though. One of my favorite tag teams mm. when they broke up, the Steiner Diners, brothers. Man. That absolutely, that was a heartbreak. That was almost right there with the Hogan moment for well, me. Well, and back yeah. up to the Hogan moment. Those of you who watched it live, do you remember as Hogan was coming to the ring? Uh, Bobby Heenan said, but whose side is he on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Go back and watch it now. They've dubbed that part out of it completely. Really? Go really? back and watch the network version or whatever on Peacock, and they will tell you, like, you you won't even hear Bobby Heenan say that part of mm. it. And that threw me off. Like, why do they do that? We already knew who the third guy was yeah. at that point. We knew he was coming down. When he came down, he goes, Hulk Hogan is here, but whose side is he on? They why did take they take it, that out? I don't know. They took That's it out. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. They took it out, yeah. Yeah, Bobby, that is, Heenan, that is Bobby Heenan was I, one of, I one lost, of the greatest of all time. Oh, oh, I yeah, lost he's goat. all yeah. credibility with Gene Oakland that night, though, because he was outside of Hulk Hogan's door, and he's like, I can hear his voice. I recognize it, but I don't know who it is. Uh, mean Gene, you, you know who that is, <laughs> and you didn't tell us who that was? <laughs> it's, it's hot over here. Yeah, look, look, look at your camera. Look, yeah, look, look at, at the camera. Let me tell you something, Mean Gene. <laughs> look at him. Look, yeah, get him. Get him, you, Chance. You, we, we – Called that hotline all the time. We wanted the scoop, and and you couldn't even give it to us. Ninety nine cent a minute we paid. Two minutes, two dollars the first you didn't minute. Even know. Yeah, didn't even Don't know. Don't look at me. Didn't, Show, tell them, even is, is Gene no. Oakland still alive? No, no. That was, that Rest was, in peace. Everybody's Rest in peace, Gino. Everybody's yeah. dead. Yeah. Old, Hogan, Mart or, old Martini, uh, Hogan Gene. and Flair and Nash. But if he was here today, I'd put him in a figure four for that. So I loved when Ric Flair had his podcast, dude. It was. He's back now. He's got it back. Yeah. Now. Got, dude, his early episodes when he had Mean Gene on the podcast, dude, yeah. and they would talk about their drinking stories. Yeah, oh, dude. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Do you remember? Yep. Oh, my Nash gosh. Nash told a story about Nash and Jericho and Mean Gene where at some – they had like a layover. It was some kind of thing. And they said that they sat and drank with Mean Gene like in a layover. Oh, they said he was like a fish. And he Martinis. Was a, he said, man, it was like a fish. <laughs> yeah. Dude, his best are the the – Outtakes from yeah. when they're doing uh, promos and yeah. stuff. And <laughs> yeah. He's like, What the fuck are you doing, yeah. man? <laughs> the sign <laughs> fell in one of them. <laughs> <laughs> And the one where uh, the Sheik grabs the turkey by the yeah. yeah. It's so funny because, like, the Sheik has spent the last 40 years of his career trying to beat Hulk Hogan again. Like, every time he's like, Sheik. We, oh, Sheik. 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 Man, we just lost him, But he too. spent the last 40 years trying to fight Hulk Hogan. He would fight Hulk Hogan anywhere. He yep. didn't care. I hope somebody in his family keeps the Twitter going. Well, oh, in all reality, is. I'm pretty sure he hasn't even been doing the Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm pretty every sure day he's you got get a manager. A fuck Hulk Hogan. A tool, you jabroni. <laughs> so now that we're talking about the NWO era of WCW, mm -hmm. the, we're getting into like Nitro starting to be a big thing. They're competing with WWE. The first big defection outside of Kevin Nash and Scott Hall mm -hmm. was Medusa, of course. Oh yeah, that yeah. infamous dropping the women's championship in the in the trash can, um, which I put like 
that was symbolic of the WWE's women's division at the time. Oh, they, they were absolutely, it. they were trash. But they were trash. Like yeah. she, she, was she here. wrestled Bull Nakaria forty times. Yeah. Like and, uh, and what was her name? Uh, Wendy, uh, Wendy Luna, Richter Luna Vachon. and Luna Vachon. Mm-hmm. Like, but they had really good wrestlers. But they, it was just so hard to watch. Yeah. And even like when she came to WCW as Medusa, I don't ever remember her wrestling a match. I, yeah. I'm gonna be honest right now, guys. I never remember any. Women's wrestling matches in WCW. Never. I remember Medusa and Luna and, uh, and Luna Vachon in a couple matches. And right. Then what was WCW? Other? Daphne. Oh, WCW. No, no, I remember no, Daphne, Daphne like later never. WCW. I right. remember Daphne wrestling. Yep. R.I.P. Daphne. I mean, she was one of like, she was very underutilized. I think she was the crowbar. A couple of those guys. This was late WCW. Okay. Um, so but I don't remember that. I don't, I don't remember, remember very many of them at all no, wrestling. Medusa. I remember Sonny came in and she didn't wrestle any. Yep. Or very little. No, I remember, but I remember she, you mean Medusa went over to WCW and threw the belts away, but and then she it. never wrestled. Right. Yeah. She That's woke it. up on uh, Robert Parker a few times, Colonel Robert Parker. Oh, good. Well, I'm sure. I think they had a couple of I'm sure ever. I'm sure he got his revenge on her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stories floating around about Mr. <laughs> Colonel Parker. Yeah. God. Uh, he was a walking around with a kneecap tripod. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. All the shoot interviews, they talk about it. They, all they the talk about talk like about their, the their girls, stories the about him and Virgil, like. <laughs> Comparing size yeah. and see, wow. yeah. the he just, he just, yeah, the baby's arm <laughs> holding a peach, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody oh, talks about, Robert wow. Parker. Oh, <laughs> but man. yeah, that Medusa, that Medusa thing, man, for sure was huh. like it was, it was such a big. And do you think that that was? Do you think that Vince was aware that that was? Nah, I don't no, think so. You think that wasn't a work that was like legit? I, think yeah. I don't know. Like, do any of y'all watch the treasure? The WWE Hidden Treasure thing where they go out and try to retrieve somebody. So they just did one with Medusa. And she said that at the Hall of Fame, she tried to give the belt back and Vince told her to keep it. Mm. So now Foley's there and he's trying to get it back to like showcase it for the fans at these pay-per-views and stuff. And she says her price is $10,000 for the belt. Mm. No, she said her price was $100,000 for the belt. Wow. And the belt appraised for like $50,000 or something. But she's saying if you I want mean, it, $100,000. I've heard she's, she's, she's another one that's awful full of herself. And she everything. is. You can tell. So she's on the dark side. Uh, she's been on the dark side of the ring or the territory one. The territory. Yeah, she's yes. been on the territory yes. one. Yes. And you can kind of tell that she's – you can kind of get that vibe yeah. from her. I mean, I don't think she holds a candle to anybody that's wrestling nowadays. No, in any, no. Like, anywhere no. you go, I, they would mop the floor with her. You yeah. put her in a ring with, like, Charlotte Flair. Even, like, let's go back a little bit, like, Mickey James or somebody like that. Yeah. They would mop the floor Even Lita. With her. Lita back Lita, in her, Lita, Even though Lita's been out of the ring forever. Like, yeah. as rusty as she is, they'd mop the floor yeah, with her. Yeah, even nowadays. Lita, and when her and Trish, even early Trish Stratus, yeah. I think, would beat Medusa. Yeah, so women's with, wrestling with, back then at that time period was, was – well, it like was you so said, what was that watch. one chick that had the spike? Uh, you said her name uh, from WWF. Boy Nakara. Yes, her. Boy Nakara. Yeah, yeah. She wrestled her like 40 times. Yeah. yeah. And Bertha Faye. And Bertha that's Faye. The one, that's the one I was talking about. The one she wrestled like a baby. Just, I'm like, what is this? Obviously, like, this is terrible. They couldn't even, like, perform basic moves. Yeah. The clotheslines and everything looked terrible. Everything just looked awful women's wrestling wise back then. Yeah, it's it's you know, totally evolved. It's definitely evolved. stepped up. Uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely totally yeah. evolved now. Yes. Another another big one I noticed in the notes um, when Luger popped up on Oh, on Nitro, the first episode the first of Nitro. Episode. That was that, so it, awesome. It cut the most pause worthy promo back and forth. I heard this is where all the big boys play <laughs> well, in here. the Mall of America. And I want to play, <laughs> but that yeah. had to been like a cool setting. Oh, like that would have been mall. awesome. I would have loved just that. Shopping oh, yeah, and you yeah. got wrestling going on. You got a televised Monday Nitro going on right. right in the middle of the ring. And that was a thing too, because that was when Luger, like he he left WWF that and night, like, like Sunday night. He yeah, pops up on Nitro jumped, the next like, day, mm-hmm. and that was like ninety three. Yes, ninety three, ninety four when Nitro started. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they had that whole deal, and I remember, I remember that match. There was a, a really dope match. I want to say it was Jushin Thun- uh, Thunder Liger and um, probably Brian Pillman. Brian Pillman. Yeah, Brian Pillman. Yep. yep. Brian Pillman. I remember that one. That's that. That Pillman and the Sting, in and the Sting Flair match. In Sting that, Flair match. Yeah. I, what I what I loved about that was like there's the pandemonium at the end. I think Hogan wrestled the main event match. There's pandemonium at the end. Luger comes out and gets involved. Their backs are at the uh, the backs are at each other. They bump into each other. And they turn around like camera. they're gonna hit each other, and they're like, "He's not even supposed to be here." And, and then the know, camera cuts. And the camera cuts. Yeah. Yeah. That is, and then he says that this is where the big boys play, and <laughs> and uh, him and. I, did they ever wrestle after that, like him and Hogan? But it was supposed to set up a match. Uh, okay, they, 
Mm-hmm. I don't remember if like they did or not. Home, but I hate that. I've been the same place as you've been. I've <laughs> wrestled this. I like come Go on, back man. and watch that. You're the narcissist. Luger <laughs> says one n- pause after pause. Yeah, he was a terrible. Yeah. Really funny. He's he been made a, fun of. All the- he was a. Te- I mean, he was a terrible uh, promo guy too. Though he had the look. Yeah, he looked he had the, the part. Look, and but that, that day he had the worst shirt ever on. It was a puffy white. It was a Jerry Seinfeld puffy shirt. Yeah, Shut up, Jordan. Shirt. No tie, just no God, collar. That puffy, and his little his blonde mullet just flowing yeah. in the Mall of America. You got the yeah. notes that it was the night after his last WWE pay per view. Yeah, yeah, which was probably, probably fighting Yoko Zuna the night before. I don't know why yeah, that probably. didn't, why he didn't get the opportunity in WWE to hold the belt because I thought he was the guy. They, well, they, they were trying to make him the guy, and he wasn't. Because remember, over. they had the Lex Express and everything, yeah, yeah and all that stuff, and he, it he just wasn't, he wasn't, he, which that was a good gimmick. I he mean, that promo, was, right? He yeah. could, I think that was his biggest fault. He I think he couldn't. From what I'd watched on that, they, he didn't want to work. Yeah, no, he it, was, it was a lot of that. I think it, a lot of it was him just being arrogant. And plus, too, they had just tried the narcissist gimmick. Yeah. yeah. And that went over like a fart in church. And, and then, then now all of a sudden, he's a great American guy. hero. Yeah. 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 Everyone, everyone had to have a, a label back in WWF. It was so well, terrible. It, it's, it's like, how do you follow Hogan? Right. Yeah. A 10 year run like Hogan. Yeah. Had, and then you got Definitely. Lex Luger. It's, Everybody was like, even back then, they were like, oh, we, don't get, we don't get behind this. Yeah. yeah. That's all that was. I don't know if it was so much Luger. He didn't help being just not very good at working. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, Hogan wasn't a great worker, but he could cut a promo. He was entertaining. He was yeah. entertaining. Yeah. He could make you jump off a cliff. Yeah. yeah. For motivation. He you know? made you eat your vitamins at night. I, I ate my Flintstone vitamins every day. <laughs> He made you say your prayers and eat your vitamins. <laughs> he did. Uh, we talked about the Steiners break up, and then you went. Uh, yeah, you that was heartbreaking was... to me. Was when the Steiners broke up because mm-hmm. that was growing. Like I said, I watched a little bit more WC. That was my favorite tag team growing oh, up. Oh, Steiners were the best. Uh, yeah, just absolutely, they were uh, the best. Just unbelievable. You had, they were. I'd hate to be in a match against them because you're yeah. going to get potatoed quite a bit. Definitely. Um, the Frankensteiner looked so bad back then, too. It looked like he dropped on his neck every single yeah, time he every did time, it. Definitely. Every yeah. time. Every time. But they just, were so physical. I loved watching them in the Road Warriors wrestle. I loved watching them in the Nasty Boy. I, like, the tag teams in WCW back then Them were and Harlem so Heat put on some great matches. They together. were so yeah. good. The they Nasty Boys the were great teams. in WCW. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they were great in WCW. And so – and they – WWF shit on the Nasty Boys and the Steiner Brothers. They yeah, yeah they really did shit. Well, they, they actually won held, title. They held the belt. They yeah. did, but I mean, they didn't utilize them like they yeah, should. They should have. have. I agree. Well, what agree. happens when these guys go to WWF? Like, they give them a title run, and back then the titles were held longer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you don't. You, oh, you only won it one time, but they may have held that thing for ten months. Yeah, and I think back then everyone was on like a two or three year contract, so their time was like up in no time. Yeah, and they were off somewhere else. Yeah, so. and in the, the, the tag division in the ninety three. And WWF was dog shit anyway. Oh, yeah, it was terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone had the gimmick. Uh, yeah, everybody was an occupation. WCW, yeah, everyone was yeah. an occupation. WCW had the best tag teams back then. You said Harlem Heat. Probably one of the Dude. best tag teams ever. Man, I mean, they were great. Booker yeah. T's promo on Hulk Hogan, guys. We- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say what he know. said. Yeah, but. Everybody knows what he said, but that's one of the most iconic moments. He's coming for him. Yeah. <laughs> Hulk Hogan, I'm coming for you. And it's so funny, too, if you look at Sherry. <laughs> If you look at Sherry's reaction, <laughs> Sherry kind of laughs as she's looking at him. Like she, you can, you can put a picture of Booker T's reaction after he says that right there. Yeah. That he was, was like <laughs> that was Booker T in real life. No yeah, doubt, yeah, that's no what doubt. that was. He forgot that he was a character on a television. Yep. Program. That's it. You're right. And he's got he a solo. He was Booker T in real life yelling at something. Yeah, and he's got a solo little wrestling program down in Texas now. Oh, he's yeah. putting out some some. Yeah. People out of his program. He was another one that was very much uh, underappreciated early on. Mm-hmm. I agree. Him and Steiner, their best of seven that they did for the mm-hmm. TV title, like uh, it was unbelievable. What was that match that he had? Was it with Jarrett? Or that Booker T had with Jarrett? The uh, boxes on a pole. One of the match? worst. I hate those matches of all. That was time. a Russo. Worst that was a Russo. All Jimmy of those, Fred. like wasn't it Sting and, and uh, Jake Roberts that had a coal miner's glove on the pole yeah. match? Mm-hmm. Like what is that? What about Dude. RoboCop showing up at oh, WCW? Man. Shout out RoboCop. <laughs> Shout out also to Buff Bagwell's mom on a forklift. <laughs> oh my god, oh, I forgot about. Speaking that. of Buff Bagwell, what was that tag team that he had with two totally cold, Buff? No, uh, with two cold Scor- uh, Scorpio back in the day. Oh man, mm-hmm. I forgot about. Uh, Remember that tag team chance? Yep. He was. Was oh. he in the American Males also? Buff. Buff yep. Bagwell. Him yeah. and uh, Scotty, Scotty Riggs. Riggs. Scotty Riggs. <laughs> Scotty Riggs. Wow. Scotty Riggs. Now Buff, totally Buff, was him and Steiner, right? I think so. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was so yeah. many makeshift tags. He, but there. he had a. I, would, I think he really got a, his his shine on when he was with NWO. Like him yeah. coming out there and like he's like, 
buff the stuff bag buff well. the stuff like and you know, top hats yeah that's like when the I top hats came that, in that was that was cool like i didn't mind that at all i then thought he, he did decided to go into porn and then yeah Andy Sedaris movies and yeah what yeah. A, <laughs> what uh what about i know you got it marked down too what about sting's free agent promo man so Look. i was heartbroken when yeah, i thought right. sting joined the nwo i was mm-hmm. heartbroken yeah and then i got to look and i was like that ain't sting that ain't him yep and then Steen comes out and he cuts the promo and then they they made it. A, this is what I didn't like about Tony Schiavone and them back then is they would make the the most obvious comments. Yeah, he hadn't even looked at the camera. Like he's not even looking at the camera. It's like he's mm-hmm. turned his back on us. Yeah, I was like, you know, you ruined. Let you, it play you, out. You ruin it. Yeah, you like yeah. jump the gun. And so I love the fact he came out. He cut that promo and that famous Sting line. The only thing certain about Sting is that nothing's for certain. And then he walks mm-hmm. off. Yeah. And then the next time you see him, he's white faced. Yeah, mm-hmm. with the trench coat. And I was like, well, this is different. And then we don't see him for a while. Right and then he's oh my, in the rafters, much. and it's like. What is this? Mm-hmm. And I mean that to me that that sting. I love Surfer Sting. There's never been a bad Sting. Joker Sting. All the Sting characters. Huge Sting fan. Mm-hmm. And but that NWO run with Sting and him coming out of the rafters. I mean, it, I think it would have continued. We yeah. we we said that's what's crazy. The about man didn't talk didn't, for a year. The mm-hmm. man didn't like you said, did not talk for a year. Yeah. Was yeah. he was he? So what, the behind the scenes of that was it, was that planned or was he hurt? And no, it, 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 no, it was, it was, it was just like he wanted to go a different direction. If you notice, around that time he started growing his hair out longer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Luger and Macho started wearing face paint anytime they do a six man tag yeah. match or whatever. So the character was evolving. It was more dark colored, less about the fluorescence. And the crow was out. And the movie I was crow out. was about yeah. to come I think out. That so. was Scott Hall's yeah. idea. Said it was Scott, Scott Hall's, Hall's idea yeah. for such a genius. Bro. Oh yeah, he's Scott Hall. Man. And I mean, but Sting really made that in the baseball bat. Coming out of the rafters or coming that, out from underneath the ring. The first time he popped out from the raft when he came down, it's like, what the? What, what is, is this? What is this? Yes. And I mean, yeah. you know, just even though, like, as his character evolved throughout the years, even his run in WWE, which was horrible. I'm not going to say it was horrible. They shit on him. Yeah. It was just too He late. didn't need yeah. the belt. No. So that no. match should have never happened. Mm-hmm. You're talking about him and Seth Rollins? The, it should never, he, yeah. Sting did not need the WWE title to solidify his, no. his mm-hmm. personality, his character. Sting, we needed that Undertaker match. We needed the Undertaker match. That's we all needed, we needed. And we needed yeah. it 10 years prior. Yeah. That's yeah. all so, we needed was the Undertaker match. Even if we would have got that WrestleMania match with him yes. and Taker, that would have done us good. We needed a couple. We needed a couple tag team matches with him and some of the like – the Bray Cena's. Wyatt, the Bray Wyatt, that would have been a heck of a storyline too with Bray Wyatt. There were so many other things they could have done other than giving Triple H the win at WrestleMania mm-hmm. over him, yeah. and having the NWO and and DX involved in it just didn't add anything to it. No. Guys, we're past that now. I'm a 40 year old man that watched the Attitude Era and watched that WC, WCW era. I wanted to see them two go at it. I wanted to see there to be a real Sting's there for a reason. Okay, great. Let's make this mean something now. Now. Yeah. Don't bring in the other parts of it. Well, not only that, Nash tore his quad again, and, that, yeah. and just coming down to the ring. Yeah. I just—I'll be honest with you—I get sick of seeing sixty-five-year-old Hogan walk down to the ring and punch people. Like, yeah. dog, you're old, man. Like, you're going to get hurt. Yeah. Like, sit down. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it, time is gone, man. Just but sit down. Uh, can you imagine though this in this day, a wrestler just standing, not saying a single word for a whole year, right? Mm-hmm. And then when, what was it? Starcade, he finally won the belt from Hogan, right? Yep. Uh, and and then, it was controversial. Yeah. It wasn't because Hogan fit. pulled his card. He pulled his card and said, eh, I don't want to not can't be clean. Looks like he hadn't been in the gym. To me, you've been gone for a year. Sting looked like he was in pretty good shape yeah. coming out of that thing. Who cares if he wasn't tanned? He's not a surfer anymore. Yeah. But you know, he's I, going dark. That whole, that, that was game changing when Sting. When Sting did that, oh yeah, it definitely, was definitely. To- and like I said, just I still see that when he come down out of there. Remember, and when he came out of the rafters at Club La Vila, yeah, and everything. Where there's no rafters there, but he ca- no, he came out of the helicopter. <laughs> he came out of the helicopter at Club La Vila. Yeah, that's another helicopter. thing too that I loved about WCW the Spring Break yep. episodes. Absolutely, when mm-hmm. they go down to Panama City and yep. put the ring in the middle of the pool. Yep. at Club La Vila, mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah, because you got water blowing everywhere as they're lowering the helicopter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, the NWO was talking about like Hall and Nash always talked about how that was like a night off because they just get drunk and then they go jump in the water. Yeah, yeah. they didn't have to hardly work, which was obviously a downfall of the company. Ultimately, you know, a lot of that yeah. getting paid for not really doing a lot. But um, another, in addition to the Sting thing, like another thing that that I know is in the notes too is when Rick Rude 
was on Nitro. Oh, and man, Raw. that was so cool. Mm-hmm. On the same night. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they pulled that off. Well, mm-hmm. Raw was being – It was pre-taped. Yeah, oh, Raw wow. was pre-taped at that time and everything. So I guess they pre-taped it a couple weeks prior, and then Nitro was live. Yeah. I don't understand Rick Rude's role in DX. Was he – was it, ever intended for him, was it ever intended for him to wrestle again? No, no I think he was hurt at that time. Okay. He was still yeah. uh, he, hurt. I think he got in a big settlement. They used to have that Lloyd's, Lloyd's of, London. of London. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, yeah. yeah. like Ted DiBiase and yep. a few yeah. other wrestlers got it, but yep. they couldn't. They weren't supposed to wrestle anymore. That's what that was. Because I remember me and Chance was uh, that Bruce Pitcher, Pitcher mm-hmm. talked about it in the Ravish and Rick Road episode. Back gotcha. Back. He had that Lloyd's of London, and he settled for what a couple million or something. Yeah. An insurance policy, so he wasn't. He didn't even wrestle in, in WCW either when he came over. For no, he didn't. Uh, You're right. He was in the NWO. He was just like a mouthpiece. Yeah, right but he wasn't there long. Course. I don't think. I don't remember him being there long for that mm. little run. No, not yeah. too long. I bet I loved hearing Stone Cold tell stories about Rick Rude, yeah. like back in the day and stuff. Mm. Just he was had, one of my favorites. Also, super underrated. Should have had yeah. the, the, the title, man. I mean, he I, won the big gold belt. I mean, like in WWF. Yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's he, he had that intercontinental warrior had the fucking belt. This man put shirt. this yeah, man put Jake Roberts' wife's face on his tights. It, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> how savage! <laughs> like how disrespectful! Literally, are you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like do you think he had a personalized airbrush artist that traveled? With oh, him? I'm sure he. I'm sure he knew somebody. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, he had the best tights. Like the intercontinental title on their airbrush was super dope. Yeah, he was definitely under underutilized in WWE. He mm-hmm. Definitely. What, what do you feel like is the greatest? Formation of the horseman, the mm. greatest combination of oh, the horseman. My opinion, it's Flair, Malenko, Benoit, Mongo. Oh wow! Wow! Really? Wow! I think that's the best one because oh, here's the thing DJ. about here's the thing about Mong- Mongo. Mongo wasn't a wrestler, but he made you think he was a wrestler. Oh yeah, he was actually he was really good considering he was a football player that just he jumped could talk. In. Exactly, he was everything the Four Horsemen was about. Yeah, if there was ever anybody that was there that was a Four Horseman, uh, it's him. Honorable mention at that time when they when they joined that that formation. Arn Anderson was hurt, of course. Yeah. But you take Mongo out and put Arn Anderson in there, to me it's the same. But Pillman, not Pillman, but uh, Malenko and Benoit with Arn and Flair or Mongo and Flair, that's the that's, that's the best version. That's, 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 that's the best version. I can't. That's, I can't. I can't, I can't. Who you got? I mean, I, it, 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 Tully has to be in there. I mean, Tully Blanchard was one of the. He was just as good of a yeah. talker as any of them. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. yeah like, not excluding I, the original. I hate, I hate Ole Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. But like. I can't not say that the Flair, Tully, Arn, and Ole, and JJ mm, yeah. is like the. I don't know, man. I, I think liked when Barry Windham was in it too. Yeah, definitely. Luger did not fit. No, no Luger. All. Sting should have never. That Sting should have never been in there either. No, they, they only did that Luger with Luger. Over. Yeah, they were yeah, just yeah, trying, trying to get Luger. Over. It just didn't work. I wasn't an Ole fan. Huge. I wasn't an Ole fan. Um, I, yeah, I just never was a fan of Ole's work. I loved Arn. Love Tully, but if I put Arn and Tully against Malenko and Benoit, that, I mean that's they're yeah. they're tying them up, man. I mean that's, those guys, man, there's no competition. That's a tough one to go with. Arn Anderson yeah. cut a promo too, dog. Oh, oh definitely. Yeah, Arn Anderson's See, my, probably like, one of the Malenko, best. Malenko and Benoit were great wrestlers, but they could like for the for the gimmick of the four horsemen, the best talking. They couldn't the four talk. Horse, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. There's, so you, you got you got your flair was like towards the. You end could of, have your your best talker horseman group and your best. Wrestling horse yeah. group because if you're going to put wrestling, you got to put Wyndham in there too. Oh yeah, definitely, wrestler. definitely. Well, the, Who the was the other three when Wyndham was in there? Flair, Flair, Arn, Wyndham. Who was the fourth? Was it Vicious? It may have been um, Sid Vicious. Was Tully already gone at that point? Tully was Tully gone. Was gone. It cocaine, cocaine. Yeah, cocaine. Was it Vicious? <laughs> the cocaine. Because yeah. that when Sid Vicious stabbed Arn Anderson. You may be able to Google like all the different. Who was the worst four horsemen? horsemen? Who was the worst member of the Four Horsemen? I Lex bet everyone Luger. everyone answers got to be the same. Uh, I'd say the, Paul Roma was the worst. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, fucking Luger. Paul Roma was the worst. Where's my camera, Paul Roma. You go. Paul Just Roma was yourself. terrible. <laughs> this is when that tablet's gonna yeah. come in handy. Paul Roma was the worst Paul Four Horsemen Roma in history. Was now awful. as a member, was he in Power and Glory? Absolutely, with Hercules, yeah. Yeah, so that was a decent Hercules. tag team. Yeah, because they weren't – he wasn't trying yeah, to be a horse. You brought them up. Yeah, they yeah, were brought they up. Were a great team, tag team. Yeah, no, not, yeah. not a horse. He was a solid wrestler, bro. Yeah, he not just a, was not a horse. He's he not like, fit for the horse. He was like chances. And at high. one point, wasn't Pil- <laughs> wasn't Pillman in the horseman? At yeah, one point? Pillman yeah. was a horseman. Yeah. He would have been a good horseman too, though. Yeah. Yeah, I just – I think he, Pillman may have been – let's see, Pillman, Flair. Jeff Jarrett was in the horseman at one point. That's debatable. <laughs> what the what you know? Like, yeah, yeah, but there, there's a shout big, out Jeff like, Jarrett. Uh, hey, Jeff Jarrett, if you're watching, just 
watching. I think Eric Bischoff. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be great. Fire, dude. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and was it? And w- super nice. I met him a few times. And wasn't? Um, oh man, I'm drawing a blank. There was one other person that was a random person. Henning, Kurt Henning was in the. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he took Arn's spot when Arn retired. Because remember, uh, Arn spot, gave that, that promo. Yeah. That yeah. promo that Arn gave. Yeah. And then Kevin Nash. War Games. Was, was that, like, was around, that was for War Games, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and then the next week, Kevin Nash came out and made fun of it. Remember? Oh, man. And Do you remember, though, like. When he was making fun of Arn Anderson with the beer? And who yeah, did it, who did it first? It, was it. Did DX make fun of the nation first, or did the Four Horsemen or get the made of? I think, did they, I th- which one happened first? I think WCW was first. Okay. Because Nation of Domination, that was like 98. Okay, yeah. You're right. You're right. Good point. I don't what know about what year that and that I didn't know maybe when, Nash when called DX one of his buddies and said, "Hey, we're gonna bite that promo you did." Or if Triple when H was DX like, "Hey, up to WCW and stuff, remember? man, they should have let him in. Oh, they should have let him in. That would have been." You talk about must see TV. Let them in because yeah. Vince would have hated if they let them in. Oh well, that and there was only DX there, and then you have a whole locker yeah. room of WCW yeah. guys there. It's like oh, this is not going to work it, out dude. well too well for you boys. Yeah. What do you What do you think? What did y'all think about? Of course, NWO is the. I would argue that it's the one of the best factions, factions ever yeah. in the history, the original. But like, what did y'all think about the Wolfpack? Uh, I think it was a better version of NWO, but I think it was done. Yeah. It should have. It should not have been labeled as NWO Wolfpack. It, it should have just been Wolfpack. Yeah, yeah. Kind of been like, been like Halloween, like, Halloween three. three. I know you was gonna say it. <laughs> 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 you have a chance. You gotta Halloween get that three. little slash in there, don't you? <laughs> 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 Tony love it. Uh, Michael Myers wasn't in it. Yeah. But look, yeah, I agree on that. I think that if it would have just been called Wolfpack, Wolfpack been fine. And it was, yeah. you know, Sting, Luger, Conan. Shout out C like Murder. I Free C like, Murder, by the way. Free C Murder. I did, did not like Cherry song. Tomato yeah. Sting. Cherry Tomato Red. I didn't like that either. Yeah. I didn't like and that And then either. you had the, I mean, then it just got to a point where NWO became so overused where, yep. I mean, fucking Stevie Ray was in the NWO. Yeah, you had the two different. Wasn't Glenn Gilberti in it? Disco yeah, Inferno. Yeah, yeah. uh, <laughs> Ken Norton. Ju- Ken Norton Jr. was in the NWO. Ken Norton. <laughs> Ken Norton. <laughs> the linebacker from. No, the- no, I'm. T- I'm not- Scott Norton. Scott Norton. I was gonna say Ken, Ken Norton, Norton Jr. Jr. Didn't Ken Norton Jr. have a wrestling match though? I don't Didn't know. He- I don't think he was in NWO. Um, he wasn't now. Yeah. Not Ken Norton Jr. But I know. Shout out Ken Norton Jr., dude. <laughs> well, I, we got to have a Tony fuck up in, in this episode somewhere. At least it's not chronological. I yeah. said it. I said well, it. Good since job. We're talking good job. About, since we're talking about that, though, <laughs> you can bring up, not that they were great moments, but like the whole deal with uh, – with Rodman and Carl Malone. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Them kind of being part of. That's that. when Rodman was uh, ditching the the Bulls and just going <laughs> off. Bulls in the middle of a I mean, playoff run. Yeah. Car- <laughs> and Carl and Electra are shooting over to. Um, that I mean, but that was that was such a good pairing. Mm-hmm. Rodman and Malone at mm-hmm. that moment in the playoffs, like that was such a good pairing. Oh, like man. it, I can imagine the money they made during oh. that time. Okay, uh, going to the money part of it. Do you think the NWO shirt is probably the most sold wrestling shirt in history? I think yeah. Austin's gives it the run. I think, really? yeah, I think the 316, I think or, that. I mean, Hulk, or a Hulkamania shirt. Yeah. I, mean. I don't know. It just got to a point where you saw those shirts everywhere. Yeah. Those and, those Austin shirts, man, like that were NWO, in the NWO, you saw NWO shirts. Yeah. But I, that's great. That's well, great. The NWO Austin had things. its run where it was the hottest thing going. But once Austin took off, oh, it's, everybody in WWE started taking off. Yeah. That's going to be a whole episode on yes. itself. We're going to do the whole, started taking off. the whole rise of Steve Austin. You looking up the highest shirt? Austin 316. Yeah, I just I can imagine. It's, a, it's, it's not showing me a number. But that was I mean, they said, they said he made upwards to – Five some five and a half million that year, his hottest that is year, insane. one year. You got to think about what them guys are making now. I don't mm-hmm. think anybody's making that money, but if you include merchandise, like they're up there. But he was making five million just off merchandise that, is that year. Insane, yeah. Insane. Austin was everywhere. I remember seeing him on the cover of the TV guide. Oh yeah. And the crazy thing is, I liked him in WCW. Yes. I liked him as Stunning I Steve. I like the Hollywood Blondes. Yeah, the Hollywood Blondes. Yeah, like, Blondes that was one of the most. Best tag teams ever to come out. And, and he, he said he always said that they he hates that they broke them up. Exactly. Yeah. I mean he had a good run with the with the T V title. Yep. Um with I pop. thought they had a great run with the tag titles and when they split them up, it just didn't make sense. Yeah. And then he goes to WWE and becomes the ringmaster. This was 
a terrible like it just didn't look right. No, his promos in ECW during that the the bridge time were was amazing. Like Hulk Hogan and shit. Yeah, mm. yes. like w- w- like when the ringmaster, you know, they was like they didn't even let him talk. They had Ted DiBiase. Right. Shout out to me and Donovan, great yeah. great promo guy, yeah. and one but, of the best belts ever, one of the coolest but, belts. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like that was that was definitely. It didn't fit him. It no, just wasn't no, him. No, and then, no, and then that whole King of the Ring changed everything. Changed yeah. everything. Yeah. And it changed, changed wrestling. Yeah. It changed, yeah. changed wrestling. Changed yeah. everything, bro. It, one Cross promo door. changed wrestling. Everything. Yeah. And it's just under you. All the guys that WCW fumbled, and they would cater to these older stars or these – the, the same guys were passing the world title around yeah. for most most of WCW. And that was the despise of it. And that was the despise, yes. And, and, what, and, what's, and what's so crazy is like the people that were underutilized or looked over in WCW were the cruiserweight yep. style guys like the Jerichos. Not that they're cruiserweight, but those guys. That yep. moved on to And w- they moved to WWF, and they get they start winning championship belts, and WWF is supposed to be the land of the Giants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. But they changed yeah. with the times. Jericho's like 5'8". Like yeah. he's WCW. short. Remember that time we saw him at the <laughs> – <Yeah, at the, laughs> I didn't realize he was so we short. Like Days of the Dead. And, and I, said, like, yeah. I was like, what? I was like, what's up, man? He was like, hey, what's up, man? And it was just all awkward, and then we just walked off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was like up to here on me. Yeah, it's like, like he's like, one of the shots. Yeah, let's like, wow, let's he's not small. talk about five, six people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm pushing five. Don't make I'm chance. Pushing. Don't make chance. Double grip that microphone again, like he's depending was going on after which pair of shoes I'm wearing. I'm pushing five nine. Yeah, I've so. never seen no. chance so heated as I have. So, seen shout that. out, Mean Gene Oakland, R- R.I.P. You just yeah. got served. I was disappointed post- posthumously. <laughs> um, but um, so I guess bringing bringing the this episode, I guess, to a close. The the, the two points that we got at the end that we have to talk about is the last nitro. Yeah, yeah. the simulcast, like. What did y'all think about that? Like as far as, it was a good way to. It was the best way possible to say. I like that they went back to the beach for it. Yeah, um, I like Booker T winning the titles. He was a d- double champion. Uh, thought that was cool. Sting Flair, and Flair put Sting on a hell Flair. of a Flair uh, classic. It. Flair, he's like, man, I wrestled in a t-shirt. But it, I mean, how else are you gonna end? You got to end with those two. Oh, you, you have, have to. to. And, yeah. and I get why. Because at that point, it was such a shell of what it was. Yeah. Russo had driven it so far in the shit. Tournament. I don't like short. I don't like short hair Flair either. No, uh, no short hair never like short hair Flair. No. Um, but like, I remember you could watching, send it off in a better way. Right. No, yeah. For what it was, it's all you could do. But I don't. I remember watching that Monday Night War every week, and I was Team WWE. Unfortunately, yeah. like, like I was all for WWE, especially when I started seeing Bischoff telling the results of the show yeah. before. Yeah. I was like, okay, dude, dude's like clearly playing dirty. But like when when McMahon came on. The, started the last episode. I was like, "This motherfucker, they done bought WCW." Yeah, because mm-hmm. at the time we were like, I was two thousand one, so I was like eighteen years old. I oh, think, yeah. and I think yeah. I could tell at that point who was gonna jump, who they were gonna retain. I knew Goldberg wasn't coming. I kind of knew Sting wasn't gonna go. I had a feeling Flair would show up eventually. Booker T, Steiner. I knew all these guys were coming eventually. Yeah, whether or not they came during the 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 other evasion invasion angle, which was terrible. Um, it looked so bad when they showed him when they yes. showed who was coming. And right, it was like all of the mid uh, all yeah. these guys because we didn't know at the time they were yeah the terrible. They were, the Getting guaranteed all, contracts. Well, the big guys yeah. were on all those contracts. Nobody knew that because that was before it was all privy to yeah. yeah people like us. But you knew the guys that were coming in like Steiner was going to get his own push. Flair was coming in to do something special, which the way they brought Flair in, I thought was great. He's a you know co owner of the WWE. Yeah, like I thought that yeah. was great. That was cool. Like, yeah, and then they tried to bring Buff. Bagwell and he it was that failed hard I've heard stories about how bad that was Booker T I think had a really decent WWE career no for sure but like that that they King Booker I love that one of the best he had the match against it it was Booker T and um and what's his name Buff Bagwell and they talk about how like hard plus he was on I think he was fighting drug addiction all that too but like that was like it went over. Horrible. Didn't he have his mom call in or so, something? Something like, like that. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> Pritchard <laughs> talks about it in, yeah. the, in one of the pods. Yeah. But like buff the stuff. But yeah, man, WCW was. Um, and it, we just scraped the surface. This may oh, be man. something we have to talk about. Oh yeah. Date. Like, but this I thought we I thought we hit on a lot of dope ass like moments from WCW. Oh, most. And there's so many. You got to think about all the guys that wrestled in WCW that we didn't mention anything about, like yeah. DDP. Oh yeah, didn't mention anything about his rise. Yeah. Um, you know, just so many. Like, you know, we talked a little bit about some of the tag teams, but man, it just it like you said, it scratches the surface. WCW to us back then was a vibe. It was a mm-hmm. it was an era. It'll never be duplicated. I don't care mm-hmm. how many wrestling federations you create, it'll never be duplicated. Yeah, it was I just, agree yeah, completely with that. 
DDP is an awesome story in the wrestling world. Yeah, WWE, he was another one that got the short end of the stick yeah. when he went to WWE. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, but yeah, they brought him in with a terrible gimmick. Could have just brought him in as DDP. Imagine that. Bring somebody in as the person they were that became popular instead of bringing him in as a stalker. Vin, like, yeah. Vin, Vince was not about something that wasn't his. No, exactly. Bro. He was not. And, that, was and not that, co- to me, that was. He bought it. He owned yeah. it. Right. It was you know his now, like, at that he point. He owned it officially. But, like, but uh, WCW, like, I think this was, I thought we did a good job of, t- of touching base on a lot of oh, those certainly. moments. Mm-hmm. But this is always something we can double back on. So if y'all comment below on y'all's favorite WCW moments and um, let us know what y'all thought of this new episode. This is the first one with, with uh, guests. Shout out to BJ. Appreciate Shout you coming to, on with yeah, us. Man. Thanks for having You're me. You're going to see a lot of him on these uh, wrestling themed yes. episodes. So um, y'all be sure to hit the, uh, the sponsors up. We got Trouble Spirits, Nixon Pro Media. Revolution One Media. We got Hot Mike Chance. Hot Mike Chance. And we out this motherfucker. Peace. Bow.